hello. I hope everybody's doing fantastic today, or or had a fantastic day. Um, I got home from work probably an hour ago. Got home a little late. Now, I did do this in the past. It was like 40 minutes, and I was all over the place. Didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I was bouncing around from random subject to random subject. So we're gonna make this quick and um, concise. I have a whole little note, little set, or I have like a whole thing full of notes and shit. I took time to really do that, but um, I want to play ranked, but I can't. I'm still getting the connection problems, and uh, the sad part is I thought. It was the game. It's actually my internet. I don't know why, but I'm having constant I'm having constant problems with connecting to Tekken 8 for whatever reason. Um, I tried playing on my wife's Xbox. Wouldn't work. Wouldn't work either. So it's our internet. But I'm able to connect to T7. I'm able to connect to Overwatch, Dead by Daylight, Guilty Gear, every other game in the fucking world i could install a, a game on game pass right now and it'd probably work fine but for whatever fucking reason the internet that i have is just blocked by tekken so if i could get a free hollow that's all i would ask maybe one day i'll be able to play this game online because it sucks sitting in the lab all day watching all these people being able to enjoy this game thoroughly and i'm stuck on the fucking lab just playing against a mindless bot or testing situations that I know are never going to happen. So it's very, very frustrating. And it really fucking sucks. Um, I really do wish my game would work or I would hopefully be able to play online someday. But it does hurt that I spent $70 on this and uh, pre-ordered it and everything. And I can't even enjoy the online experience like everyone else that I know. So... What we're gonna do today is talk about uh, a little bit of Brian Fury, one of my favorite characters in Tekken, next to King. Uh, Tekken Seven was a was a game that I had picked up while, um, like, in my earlier stages of playing fighting games. He was one of the newer characters I picked up in my my more serious era of fighting games. I got super into an MKX, and I picked up Tekken Seven, wanting to learn some characters. I wanted to learn King. Because I had played it when I was a kid in like Tekken 5 and Tekken 6. And I grew an interest in Brian on his Tekken 7 look. He looked so fucking cool. I love that look on him. I wanted to learn him. And not knowing that he was a very difficult character. I um, faced a lot of early challenges of this character. And it's led to me wanting to learn the ins and outs of him. And he's easily one of my favorite characters that I've played in fighting games, period. So, we're going to learn some Brian Fury. I want to help other people that are maybe interested in this character or need a little bit of help understanding how certain, like, his fundamentals play. So, what we're going to do, the first thing I want to talk about is um, how the heat system works. I want to turn off my rage real quick. So, in Tekken 8, if you are either newer to the game or fully don't really understand how heat works or maybe need a little bit of a refresher heat is this little blue bar that's under your life bar right there and to activate it you will use two plus three or it's bound to rb or i i would assume it would be bound to r1 on playstation and you'll do like a little a little burst and it is armored, so it is an attack that's bounded to your 3 plus 2, or Y and A on Xbox, and Triangle and X on PlayStation. I don't know, like, the PC bindings, so I don't play it on keyboard. Please do not murder me. Uh, when I reference 1, 2, 3, and 4, I'm just going to take a little quick detour here for anyone that doesn't know. And Tekken, as well as, like, um, Mortal Kombat, they use a notation called 1, 2, 3, 4, which is to label out the buttons so um so one is going to be your x or square two is going to be your y in your triangle three is your x or your a and four is your b or your circle so if i were to say if i want to do one four as my string it would be x b or 
square circle. And it, it's basically the universal way of saying it. If I want to do like a move that requires back or forward or down or like uh, a certain motion, you would say the, the certain motion. If I want to do like forward A, I would say forward three. If I want to do a combination of buttons that require more than one button, you'll say the, the notations plus and then the other notation, like how I said three plus two. So people don't know, oh, we press these buttons at the same time type of ordeal. So that's the, the easiest way to explain that whole little thing. If I, you hear me reference that a whole lot. But heat, heat is kind of like this game's version of burst, similar in like Guilty Gear. It is an armored attack that is safe on block. So you can use it in defensive situations. Oh no, it is plus one on block. I thought it was safe. But you can use it as a defensive tool to be like, get off of me. Or maybe you're trying to reaffirm your pressure. Like if I'm in this dude's grill and like, I want to make sure my pressure stays nice. I do that and it keeps me continuing what I want to do. Now there are several things you can do out of heat. Um, there's move specific stuff that are character specific and then there's a universal one which is shared which if you were to press the heat bind button again you do this heat attack that takes the rest of your heat gauge and it is it is i'm i'm pretty sure it's it's not armored so but they're they're usually a very quick move and a lot of the time it is insanely plus on block so a lot of people will sometimes after heat activation if they still want to continue they will activate again to continue plus frames it does add chip which is a new mechanic introduced in this game and the way you hit, do chip is like hitting certain moves on block and the way you can get rid of the chip is doing damage um to your opponent to regain all the chipped health that you have so there's a universal one that uh, every character has now obviously not all of them are created equal some people's uh, heat enders are really good so when you're in heat characters also get specific things brian has a new mechanic that's introduced in this game which is called snake eyes and it gives uh new moves in this arsenal that are normally either not that good or already strong tools make them even stronger and harder to deal with when you know you have it you'll see the little things around his wrist and while not in heat he has one charge so he can get uh, off certain moves. While in heat, he has an unlimited amount, but it takes his heat gauge to, to do them. He also gives him access to his already stronger like install. And it also makes certain moves in heat be able to be canceled for the, the cost of your your um, the rest of your bar. If you just hold forward after doing the move, you don't have to, but if you want to, and hold forward and it uh, continues it off. It, you are also able to do it on block. And usually it's it's plus, so your opponent really has to kind of respect it. Obviously, you only get these once per round, so once you use it once, you will not be able to use it for the rest of the round. Obviously, knowing when to use it is gonna be your best thing as well as um, making the most of it. You know, you could just use it in a defensive sense and then reapply your pressure. So it doesn't have to be an all go all in. I need to win this game off this combo type stuff. You could use it in a um, in a way to re-establish uh, yourself or regain your momentum. And now I would like to talk about his heat specific moves that, that are brought into this game. Now certain moves out of every character's move list are different. And hitting these moves will cause something called a heat engager. I was doing 4 4 2. If I hold forward, I can do that extension. Now, 442 also has this uh, this certain hit on it. It has like this sort of flame at the end of it. Same with his uh, sway, 1 plus 2, his 1, 2, 4, and um, down back, 1 plus 2. They'll have this certain move or the certain spark at the end of it that shows that these are a heat engager. Oh, I forgot about a sidestep 2-1 as well. But these moves on hit, not on block. On block, they'll just, some of them will cause chip. But not all of them do. But if you hit an opponent with these moves, it'll cause something called a heat engager, which they are kind of staggered and you're kind of able to kind of do whatever the hell you want to them so to speak and it uh, activates your heat now 
a lot of the time when you do use this, it's usually to apply a pressure. Um, a lot of people will either go in, do that for even more plus frames, maybe to cost chip. You can also, if you want, go into another heat engage and hold forward. So it, it causes a a rock paper scissors kind of aspect out of your opponent and i would like to talk about his heat specific ones he has 442 which i mentioned now this is a fast high it's minus nine on block so it is safe um the way frame data at least works in this game anything minus nine all the way to uh minus one is safe once you hit minus 10 and above that's when you're considered punishable now this is a very fast high but it is duckable so if they're expecting this they could punish you pretty badly yes down back one plus two which is a double hitting you won't actually get the heat exchange off first hit it's mainly off the second and usually you'll use this as a uh, you could use this as a punish um, I'm pretty sure off sidestep counter hit you're able to um, go into it I forgot to mention, while he's doing, get an easier way to get a uh, 442 to hit, actually, is to do back four in a 442, which is actually a true combo, as well as up forward three. So these are moves that are good to cause your hit engage. And kind of like this no wall area, it's better to use like your up three and your up forward three, because it's minus two on block. It's really safe. And if you do get a stray hit, you could go straight into it. But it is also kind of situational because if you hit on the tip of it or you not space it properly, you could miss your opportunity to hit it. As well as it's a very tight link. It's a two frame link. So you have like just a little bit. So you're either going to have to buffer this as it's hitting. Back four is uh, easier to hit, but back four is minus minus 10. This move becomes a little bit uh, scarier in uh, towards a wall because it pushes him further back and your opponent has a harder time dealing with it so usually you'll use back four in more of a wall situation more than a mid-screen situation. Um, he has sway one plus two which I'll get further into sway in a little bit. It's kind of like Brian's thing where if you do quarter circle back or quarter circle forward he does this little sway and he has certain moves that he can do out of it and one of his moves is um, 1 plus 2 and it's one of his heat engagers. It's a very fast mid. It is minus 9 so it is safe. It isn't a bad move to use. It is quite far reaching so it can reach pretty damn far. And you can also do late sway, so you can kind of wait a little bit after doing sway. You can wait till like near the end of his sway to hit it. So it can be a very powerful tool to hit people out of. He has one two four, which is more of a counter hit. Um, counter hit activation. You won't normally get it off regular hit, and it is safe, but this whole string is high all this is high it is a little risky to throw out but he also has a strong mind game between uh one two one and one two three sidestep two plus two one he has two sidestep moves out of sidestep either left or right he has sidestep one which in tekken 7 it used to counter hit launch now it's plus 15 the only thing i found that you can get out of this is down back one plus two. He can also, if I remember, do forward two one four if you don't want to go into a heating gauge. And then he also has a new string, which is sidestep two one. That goes in a heating gauge. The last hit is minus five and has a lot of pushback. So it can be a really good move to use. The last hit is high, so they can duck it. I think it's only minus nine on just the first hit. Yeah. So they have the mind game of not knowing when you're gonna commit to that second hit. And then I would like to talk about his new thing, which is Snake Eyes. How he builds Snake Eyes is doing certain moves that he has to uh, give him Snake Eyes, like the new move that he's given up forward one pl or three plus four, which is like one of his new corkscrews. He'll do like this little animation out of certain moves. And um, can also manually activate it out of certain moves as well. You can build it off sway 2-4. And you 
can build it off uh, up forward three plus four, which gives them one charge. This thing called Snake Eyes. The way Snake Eyes works is it gives certain moves that he has are even stronger and have stronger tools to to deal with um, his pressure. So he has a new move as well as up forward two 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 four or uh, uh, up two two two. Yeah, it's two 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 three. You won't really be using this move a lot. I'm not gonna lie. You'll probably only use this in wall situations. But he has um, two other things. A new variation of four forward two, which is forward forward one plus two. So normally it's minus nine on block, and it has pushback. While the increased version has so much more pushback and is minus five. So he has that, which is even stronger. It does more damage, and it's even more plus, and causes a further uh, knock back. And he has another move, which out of his of his strings now this is a normal move it has no like extensions i can't do anything off of it just three plus four but in snake eyes if i do three plus four two it's a new string and it has different properties i can i can just do it instantaneously i can slight charge i can slightly charge it or i can fully charge it so in Snake Eyes, if I do the regular full charge, 3 plus 4 into 2, it causes an unblockable wall splat. Now, it can be interrupted, which is why you're able to kind of change the timings. Now, there's only one form of delay with it. You can't, like, do, like, a weird... You can do, like, a slight charge delay. But if you're if you commit to the hold, you're going to commit to the whole thing. And on normal hit, it causes a corkscrew. So Snake Eyes gives kind of Brian this new thing to apply even more pressure where he becomes even scarier because the whole thing with Brian, they, this is gonna be his whole kit, this, the way he kind of plays, he's a very defensive character that uses a lot of his tools to force uh, counter hit situations. Brian is a counter hit monster. Now, he did lose some counter hits from Tekken, uh, seven. No, uh, coming to this game, he did lose forward forward four. This used to launch, but on normal hit and on counter hit, it guarantees him soccer kick. Um, I was talking about how he lost sidestep one launcher, and he's only able to do uh certain things out of it. But other than that, I still think his counter hit game is pretty strong. Now, a lot of your main moves, I'll, I'll talk about his counter hit game as well as like his um, other great moves. One move that you're going to be using like crazy to have your opponents kind of guessing is Orbital. It's, a, it's a, one of his best buttons. It's safe on hit and it's a launcher. This is a launcher that starts a lot of his main combo game. You can use it either up forward or you can just tap up and he won't move. And this move is really good just because it can clip. Like you see where his little knuckle is. I can clip him from like right here. So it can be very crazy. Now, depending on where you hit your opponent with it, whenever you do up forward, you're most likely are going to hit him and get your full combo conversion anyways. But if you do like the normal, um, the, the normal up forward, you're going to have to do like a little micro dash to get your combo to hit or else you're gonna have to do a, a different combo because you'll be too far away to do his regular stuff. So orbital is gonna be like one of your best moves to use. Um, another move that you're gonna be using a whole lot, I would say is three plus four. Now this is minus 13, but it pushes them so far. And like, what are they gonna do from minus 13 from this far? Like, no one can really punish that from that far. There could be maybe a there could be could be one character that could punish this move from that far, but at the top of my head, I, I don't know if there's anyone that can. Now, on counter hit, you get a launch. Even at the bare tip of it, launch. It's a really good move to use. And while I was talking in Snake Eyes, it becomes even scarier because they have the. They also have to think about the the ender and how if you're going to commit to it or not, as well as when 
knowing to commit to that move. And Brian's whole thing is either forcing counter hit situation onto his opponent with orbital with three plus four. He also has a uh, forward three, which is a counter hit launcher. It is also minus zero on block. Can also be spaced properly to be plus one and plus two. Like right there, that was plus two. So depending on range, it can be zero up to plus two. And on counter hit, he can say full combo. So it's kind of juicy, juicy move. So he has moves that force counter hits that play into his game super well with keep away and putting them in situations where they either have to um, respect your your um, moves or they will eat a full counter hit launcher or he has buttons to keep his momentum going which i'm going to talk about um i'm going to talk about back one now this move is a counter hit launcher it is it, it does insanely high but the thing about this move it's a it's a mid it's a mid it is kind of slow but it is plus four and blocked. So you're able to keep your, your pressure going with this move and kind of stay in your opponent's face and just abuse them with this move. Now he has back one, obviously one of his better moves. He also has a variation of one, two and one. One and one, two, like one, two is uh, safe, but he has stand one, which is plus. A lot of, a lot of everyone's standing jabs are plus. But he has a mix-up, which I was alluding to earlier, which he has a mix-up between 1-2-1, one, one, which is a counter-hit launcher. He also has 1-2-3, which is a low. That causes a trip. And a guaranteed soccer kick. He can delay the last hit of it. So he could do something like that. He can delay it really bad. And if your opponent presses something, they will explode for it. And it's also safe if you even do the full string. Um, he also has down forward two, which is 13. It's minus six. Now he has a mind game between this with uh, a kick that is very similar to three plus four. Now, if you press something during it, counter hit launcher. And there's that mind game of, is he gonna commit to it as well as it's safe? So, if your opponent tries to steal his turn and you commit to the move and they express something, counter hit launcher. And he also has down two. This is 14 minus two on block. And the second hit is is punishable, but can be slightly delayed and causes a counter hit launcher. Now, this is also a counter hit launcher. I know this move is minus 10. And he also has a second variation, which can be very delayed. The second variation doesn't really offer a whole lot. It, it, even though it's plus 29, your opponent can block almost anything out of it. So it's just a momentum carrier. So he has um, wall standing three or a sway three. And he also has back to one. Now back to one are both highs. And back two is minus seven. But the second hit of it is zero. Now, obviously, if you're playing against someone that knows this string about Brian, they're going to hold down. So I wouldn't recommend using this a whole lot. But the second hit is a counter hit launcher. And if you guarantee the first hit, it's a guaranteed full combo. So <laughs> he has a lot of tools to force your opponent in these weird situations and rock, paper, scissor kind of ask things to where are they gonna press are they not gonna press are they just gonna sit here and block all this pressure so he has a way of being super defensive and playing this keep away game you know playing these these uh buttons with big counter hits and slight delays in his moves or he could be like an in-your-face monster with good pressure good frames very nasty shit now with all those counter hits in mind, um, how does he build momentum? Now, obviously with back one, he builds it with back one, kind of builds it with this beautiful move that is back sway three, which is called hatchet kick. Now I'm gonna take a quick little detour to explain his sways. 
Now, I did explain that if you do chord circle back or chord circle forward, he does like these weird sways. And um, each sway has different moves and different properties for some of them. Now, wall standing one and wall standing three are the same in sway. So they function practically the same. When he has sway, he has three variations of his two variation. He has a uh, two one, which is gonna be like, a, usually you're a uh, ender for a lot of stuff. It's, uh, sway two four, which guarantees his snake eyes and is a, uh, a lot of your corkscrew or your, a lot of your combo filler stuff and he has a new move which is sway 2-2 two, two, which is a knockdown so sway 2-1 uh, and sway 2-4 are punishable while sway 2-2 two, two is uh, safe and it is a mid well I think I don't know 2-1 is a mid too I thought it was high high uh, usually you won't be using the sways like sway uh, two one or two four or a regular neutral situation. They're mostly made for combo filler all the time. And then he has sway four, which is actually I'm not gonna lie, a dope move. It's very far reaching, a minus five on block and on counter hit. Um, you get a guaranteed combo because it guarantees uh one. So he has a full extension, which is uh, Sway 4-1-2, uh, which is uh, also an ender. But on counter hit, it guarantees launch. So it is actually pretty dope. It's a really dope move. Um, it's also a mid. It is a little on the slower side, but it's very far reaching. So he has Sway 4-1-2, Sway... Uh, 2-2, two, 2-1, two, two, and 2-4. Two, he has Sway 1, which is his wall standing 1. And Sway 3-4, which is like his wall standing 3-4. So those practically function all the same. And he also has a back Sway. Which does make his Korean back dashing a little harder. Because um, a lot of people do a shortcut for... Um, Korean backdash. You don't want Korean backdashes. It's a way where people uh, cancel their backdash frames by pressing down back. And once you're able to do it, it makes backdashing safer to do because you're still all in blocking frames while cancel while pressing down back. So the while I'm doing the Korean backdash and pressing down back, um. I am blocking while doing all those things as well as blocking low for a split second if someone were to uh, engage with the low. Now with characters like Brian or Paul or characters with back sways, a lot of people take shortcuts for um, the Korean back dash because it's, it's a little harder to do to do back, uh, back dash and then down back. Especially on pad, at least for me, it's a little weird to hit because sometimes you'll hit down on accident. So. A lot of characters that have back sways, it's a little harder for them to do because people will do shortcuts like back dash and a quarter circle back. And since you have a character with a back sway, you have to be a little bit more precise with your your back dash and your timing. So Korean back dash on them takes a little bit more time and takes a little bit more effort to do. Um, but his back sway, he has several moves out of this. He has back sway one, which is a new move that he got. It's actually a corkscrew. And it is a high counter hit launcher. So you're actually gonna make something about this. Which is pretty neato. It's very fu very fast, a very great move to use. Super hard to react to. And you also get a guaranteed soccer kick on normal hit. So it's pretty dope. Um, back to four. This used to be a launcher, uh, counter hit launcher, kick seven. Now this is just um, guarantee soccer kick. Very fast. It is minus nine. Uh, at least the first hit. I don't know the last hit. It is safe, thankfully, and it forces crouch. So it is a good move. It kind of moves his hitbox or like his hurtbox a little back. It becomes a little bit more potent. Uh, so he has back sway 2-4. This was one of his corkscrew moves in 7, but its its purpose is a little different now. 
it is a pretty far reaching move and it does guarantee the second hit so it can't be a really good move for whip punishing but it is a little bit on the slower side so you would have to like incentivize or predict uh, a, a move coming out so it isn't as strong as it once was at least i think but you know how do i know i'm just a yellow rank player um he has two of his more infamous moves which is soccer kick which is this is your uh, get off the floor move if your opponent just sticking on the floor you're just gonna be spamming this move over and over to get him off the floor so one of his better moves and it is also a launcher so so pretty pretty dope move it is a punish one yeah it's minus 12 so I wouldn't recommend doing this move um, other than just using its utilities on the ground. There's also certain situations where if your opponent's a certain way, like, uh, you know, on certain back turn situations, it'll cause a launcher. Mainly use it for just knockdown uh, stuff. He has a lot of uh, moves that force knockdowns that guarantee this move. I have talked about. Oh my god. I don't need a dash up there. There we go. And then one of his best moves, one of his best lows, which is soccer kick. Or a uh, hatchet kick. This will be your main low to go to. It's plus five on hit. Uh, now, obviously, a lot of lows are punishable. But this is going to be your main go to because it builds momentum. So let me just back one. Ha uh, hatchet kick. Back one, kind of play this uh, mix-up game of, am I going to hit you with a mid, or am I going to hit you with uh, this low that I'm just able to bully you with? And you also have to deal with the game of taunt, which I will get into a little later. I forgot to mention this when I was talking about his sways. Um, he has moves that go in this way. Now, out of the many moves that he has, he has back three, which if you hold forward, he goes in this way. And he also has back to one. So a lot of your combo structure, uh, structure will have this kind of um, using these moves a whole lot in his um, in a lot of his combos. So knowing you can also use sway uh, to cancel out of these moves because um, a lot of these moves also have continuations out of them always force a certain mix-up. You can also cancel it by sidestepping. And then you could hold back, but you're not really going to be using this in your opponent's face. It's more or less a combo structure thing, but, you know, what do I know? So, one of his best moves and more crucial moves to use to make Ryan even scarier in a way now, talking about all of his great stuff with being a counter hit machine, great defensive game, and um, great keep away game, we'll talk about his lower, shittier side, which is his low game is terrible. Hatchet kick is probably his only momentum building move. Down back three, minus one on hit. Down one, or down three, zero on hit. Down four, zero on hit. Down 3 plus 4, minus 1 on hit. So a lot of these lows you'll be using for more or less chip. And not for momentum. Because Hatchet Kick takes a lot of damage and builds your momentum. While a lot of your other lows kind of are just like uh, moves to kind of get your opponent. Keep them on the heels. Because Hatchet Kick is a little easy to react to. Or it's a, it, I want to say it's easy to react to. That's a lie. It's a little slower. So if you're constantly using this low, over time your opponent will pick up on patterns and ways to go with people with lower, uh, easier. Maybe down back three, or down four, it's a little bit quicker, so it's a little harder for them to kind of incentivize and know when you're going to hatch a kick. Um, these lows are not that good. The only one that I would kind of use is down back three, because he, he stays in crouch. And he has certain moves out of crouch, which is down forward four. And he also has um, down forward uh, two one. Which you can slightly delay the second hit. I don't know if there's anything 
different, but it just forces um, Brian and Crouch where he's able to kind of act out of certain moves. Down 4 is also a good one to use if you don't want to use Hatchet Kick all the time. You won't be using down 3 a whole lot. At least I don't use it a whole lot, but it's still not a bad load to use. And on counter hit, you do get 3-2. And you can hold 1 plus 2 to get Snake Eyes. So, I'm not saying do not lose these lows because they're shitty. I wouldn't use, personally, I wouldn't use down 3 plus 4. It's kind of, it's as slow as Hatch and Kick. But hit, it's, your you practically lose your turn. So I would just rather use Hatch and Kick if you're going to use your 19 frame. I would just use Hatch and Kick, down back 3. Down four and down three. Those are kind of like his lows are his main weakness. His, his lows are not his strongest suit. A lot of people in Tekken have very strong down ones. They're usually a good check, either minus one up to maybe even plus one on block. Uh, a good mig check. Brian's is kind of bad, it's kind of slow. A lot of their uh, mid uh, checks are anywhere from like 12 to 14. Brian's is 15 and minus five on hit now he has a multitude of this he has like a chain up to four times now if he continues to extend off of it it's minus 10 so it's a very slow not good mid check with a slight delay that is kind of punishable his kind of like frame data on a lot of his um just his universal mechanics that usually a lot of people kind of carry are different like his orbital obviously a lot of people have hop kicks while well, he has an orbital some characters also have orbitals like him like a uh, claudio he kind of like shares different uh, universal mechanic while well, like his down one is not as good as a whole lot of others because they're used as a mid check his is more used as a rps kind of situation and um kind of use a completely different than how other characters use it now a lot of people also have down down forward two being their main launchers. Now I did talk about this earlier. Brian's is this 13 frame mid that has a counter hit um, extension with three. Well, a lot of people have, that's like their main launch punish. Now Brian's launch punish is forward back two. It's called jet upper, which is 14 instead of a lot of people's 15. A lot of people have a 15 while his is 14. Now, with it being a clunky back forward input, it's it requires a little bit of execution. That sounds a little funny saying that a back forward input requires execution, but it is really weird to to do it in a a game kind of like this. While uh, in like a lot of other fighters, it's kind of like a normal thing. But like for a character to have arrow launcher be on a forward back input. It's a little weird. So his main launcher is this 14 frame move that is a high. And um, his down forward two kind of serves a different purpose of being like, are you gonna press something and try to take your turn or get counter hit? So like uh, his moves are kind of repurposed in a way to kind of make his counter hit game a little bit scarier to deal with and a lot of his confirm kind of scarier so they're more of like rp they play into like his rps a little bit more so they're not really there to build his momentum because your main momentum builders are going to be back one and your hatchet kick as well as your um your back sway one with it being plus five i would say even though they're not as good or they're they're not the universal mechanic it kind of fits his in my opinion it fits his toolkit a lot better and it forces to you to still play like the moves are still used in a way to play into him super well at least i think but um i will say his punish game is not that great i think that's one of also his uh, many weaknesses that he does have his punishes are not the best in the whole world he has one two uh two four or two three one four 4-3, uh, down back 1 plus 2, this is 15, but you're not going to use that if you have jet upper. Um, down forward 2, 2-1, uh, two but this punish game is pretty bad up until you get to uh, 14, so 
I will say that he does lack in that department as well, but it would be kind of crazy if this character who fishes for counter hits, who builds his momentum off, um, his insanely plus moves, also has amazing punishes. So, we'll talk about one of the last things, which is his soccer kick. Or, not soccer, what the hell am I talking His taunt game. All our characters have taunts in this game, and Brian is no different. If you do 1 plus 3 plus 4, you get his taunt, which also builds um, snake eyes. But you're not going to be using it to build snake eyes. You're not just going to, you know, you're not going to do that, respectfully. Now his taunt acts as uh, a pressure tool. Now, I know that sounds a little ridiculous, but hear me out. You're able to cancel his taunt off of the hit, and for a split second right um, once you cancel it, you are plus 16, which means you are able to do certain things because it locks your opponent out for a slight time where it becomes unblockable. So moves like 1 4, 2 3, um, 4 3, forward. Um, Forward one two or uh, forward two one four. I cannot hit it right now. My goodness. There we go. Two one four. Back four. Please excuse my rustiness. I've not played Tekken for a minute. I've been mainly writing the script, so my stuff stays on a relevant pace. I'm trying to show you an example of this hitting, because this does. There you go. Back four. Like anything you think of will hit. That's uh plus that's uh sixty frames or lower. Now, you might reckon, oh wait, his his jet upper is fourteen. Uh up to fifteen frames of startup. So does that mean you can hit a jet upper off top? Yes. Now, this is a very, very difficult feat that not every Brian player can do. Because the the trick is it's a it's a just frame, so it is a little hard to it is really hard to do. And by I mean really, it's like one of the hardest things in this game to do. Now, once you know how to use punch it up, where it becomes extremely difficult for your opponent to really deal with. So while your opponent's on the floor a lot of the time, you're able to kind of build taunt. He's also able to build it off of his heat engages. So it becomes very scary with taunt forcing these unblockable situations. Now hitting like 1-4 and all these, these are more like for chip kills or just getting extra damage. The main thing that I would incentivize any Brian player that is looking forward to playing him because he does require an execution barrier. He's a very difficult character and he's since he works kind of different than a whole lot of other Tekken characters, which obviously every character is really different, but some characters have mechanics that are shared in a universal way. Brian has to be played in a completely different way. Um, I would recommend learning Taunt back four. Knowing this is crucial to Brian because it makes a particular part about Brian very, very scary. There we go. It makes this place very scary. Let's say I hit Orbital and they get up and I put them in a taunt setup. just off a taunt back four. This is what your opponent has to eat if they get forced into a, a taunt setup. I would I would reckon learning this taunt back four. This is gonna be your your best friend, especially at the wall. This taunt makes his, his wall game even scarier while knowing you have back one, sway one, hatchet kick. It makes everything so much scarier, as well as the fact you could hit them with taunt and do a completely different move because they're expecting an unblockable. So taunt can be used in a in a way that you don't have to use it to force a taunt back four. But knowing how to hit taunt back four is probably the best thing for a Brian. If you don't want to learn any of the other taunt stuff, 
I would say learn Taunt Back 4. Uh, knowing how to do this makes it crucial for Ryan and gives you an edge that your opponent has to look for and they just keep quick rising off the floor. Because then it forces your opponent to either roll mix up, you can uh, delay your taunt. So, his taunt is fucking amazing. I'd also like to talk about his, um, his side, like, set, like, moves. So, certain moves have, like, this little sphere around them. Which, um, if your opponent sidesteps, this will clip them. Now, his are actually quite good. He has 4 4 4. He has, um, 1 plus, or, yeah, 1 plus 2 2. He also has 1, 1 plus 2 1. Now, he can, they're both safe. He has, uh, two versions. The first one is a high and it's minus 1, and the other one is minus 14. So it's just like, if you think they're going to duck it, um, it'll actually counter hit launch. And if you hit them with it normally, you can actually heat off of it, which is a combo. So, pretty fucking just disgusting. Over 2 as well, guarantees soccer kick. I remember what other sway, or like other... Like non sidestep moves, and he has. I know he ha he has Snake Edge, but this is a very slow fucking move. It's 29, and it is a very, very punishable block. Mine is 26. They can watch a whole fucking movie before punish you. I can't really think of any other moves other than one, one plus two, and four four four. Now these are both really good moves. Wow, um, four four four. Is guaranteed soccer kick. It is minus nine, but it forces crouch, and it is kind of quick. And it has like a interesting hurt box, and it reaches kind of far, so it can be really nasty to hit with your opponent with it sometimes. While one plus two is has a lot of forward momentum, it is also safe on block. It has two variations. So these, the, both of those moves are really strong to use if you think your opponent's gonna sidestep. Because I mean, when you're doing back one, sway one, and hatchet, they're gonna try to sidestep, and this is where these moves can clip them and uh, end their life. Before I end this, we'll talk about his combo game. So a lot of his combo game, off of like a lot of his counter hits, he'll be using a uh, down back two, which is like his uppercut, which will uh, launch. Now you'll either use back to one and to sway. I found that um, he has uh, back to four into sway one, which I it does do more damage. I've noticed like that does 66, and I do the same combo with. Um, The ending part of the combo is a little harder to hit, so if you want a little bit more consistent damage, this also builds snake eyes and does higher damage than this, but if you're able to hit the ender with uh, the back to one, it actually does more damage, so it's really for personal use what you would want. I just found it neat that off of um off of back to four I can do sway one and that works. Now there are times where your um two four will hit, your back two four will hit, and your back sway one will, will just miss because you're maybe not close enough or they're too low. Like if I hit on the tip of my orbital I can hit him with this, but my back sway one will whiff. So it's knowing when to use your combos and knowing when to hit them. Knowing if I want to do 2-1 into sway or 2-4 in the back sway. Now, both combos are a little hard and a little weird to use for his combo structure wise. So I would say a base combo that I would want people to learn is if you do orbital, you'll do 
down back two. You can either do jab one or jab two. Now the difference between both of them is jab one will keep them closer to you. So you're, yeah, it's a little bit more forgiving. It's a little bit more forgiving. While jab, or a stand two will do more damage than jab one, but it will push your opponent further forward. So it's really up to you whether you want damage or your opponent to be closer to you. It's really just up to personal preference. So see, that does 68. Let me slightly delay that. There you go, that is 65. So, uh, two, more damage, push them a little further. One, does a little less damage, but keeps them closer to you. So really up to you. Um, your enders will maybe be a little different depending on them. A lot of your enders for your combos will consist of either back three and a two one. You can also do um, you can also do back three into um, you can also do back three. Oh my god. You can also do back three and the two two. The sauce is on knockdown. Wow. Um, two one will do more wall carry. Now, if you don't have like a whole lot of um, a whole lot of like uh, carry, you could do two one t uh, two one t or four one two, which also is really good wall carry. But if you already have like a lot of air juggle time. They'll fall out of it. So a lot of your enders will usually be back three in the sway. Now, if that is a little hard, because sometimes you will need to slightly delay your sway. Because if I'm doing this combo normally, if I do this like out of sway and I'm, I'm pressing it as soon as possible, um, the second hit of 2 1 will. Like, if I am. If I am. Um, going back three in a sway to one. Um, it, the second hit will whiff because uh, they're too far forward, which means you need to slightly delay your sway, but not delay too much, or your opponent will drop out of it. And you'll also need to do a little dash up so you're a little bit closer to them. So your delay, um, your delay can still properly hit them. I still haven't found the, the, the timing quite yet. It's still a little, um, a little weird for me. And it's also character based, because it might not also work on the bears. So I slightly delayed it and that was able to work. Now if you think they're doing the 2-1, this sways a little hard. You can also just do 2 1 4. And you're actually able to kind of make everything work um, well as well. So if, if you know, the, the back 2 1 in the sway is a little hard for you, you can always just do back 2 1 4, which is a good launcher. And if you're also struggling with the sway at the end of it, you can also just do down. Uh, three two. You can do down back one plus two. You can just do manual sway. Or you could just maybe like uh, do uh, down back uh, two to put them in a mix up situation. So it's really up to you how you want to end them. Your combos, it's just knowing um, what and your juggle time will be. Now, before I end this this training session, um, I would say Brian is a very fun character. I enjoy him. Like I said, he does have an execution barrier with how his sways work, um, his, his game being a little bit more defensive and fishing for counter hits, but he can also be an oppressive uh, guy with taunt, back one, sway one, uh, hatchet kick. 
um, many of his counter hit strings that can be slightly delayed and force your opponent into RPS situations. So, I would, um, that's where I'm going to call it on my Ryan tutorial. Now, I would just like to show everyone a silly, goofy, little, dumb little, stinky look, stinky combo that I thought of off a of Snake Edge or a Down Back 3. Now, being in the lab makes this very boring. So sometimes I just like to have a little bit of fun. And one of these days, I wanna, whenever my online does decide to work, for whatever fucking reason, I would love for it to work, um, I would wanna hit this on someone online. Hitting them with taunt and going in a snake edge. <laughs> and I wanna do this exact combo. There we go. That hits. Yeah! And I'll show you the last variation. I think that one's the hardest one to do, just because of the dash up into the... Um, the dash up into it. Oh, that's probably the hardest. That one's probably the easiest one for me to do. Looks like I need to. No. It's the least damage angle. Well, I think the most damaging one is actually the other one where I do uh, sway 3 4 and a dash sway uh, 3 sway 3. Yeah, the, this one's actually the most damaging and it's the hardest. But one of these days, I will hit this on someone online and it's gonna be the best thing of, of my whole life. But I want to thank everyone for being here with me on this Brian tutorial. I hope I help fellow Brian enthusiasts and maybe someone that was really wanting to play Brian and now they're into, wow, this character is fucking dope. So, <coughs> I'm so sorry, but um, appreciate it. Um, I just hope maybe I brought someone that maybe wanted to learn Brian a little bit of like his comfortability and being able to play him comfortable now and just try him. Cause he's a dope fucking character. <laughs> Trust me, it's gonna be trimmed a whole bit. I'm gonna trim the shit out of it. It's not gonna be an hour of karma. You're wildin'. But.